Okay, so my preference is definitely an SSD drive with a USB SATA cable on the Raspberry Pi 4, but uh, I do have a lot of micro SD cards and uh, I do find them very handy. They're reasonably priced storage and uh, pretty cheap to use, but I do have a lot of SSDs. But even with all these, I still keep running out because I want to keep certain operating systems uh, and I want to keep going back to them. So I bought three more micro SD cards. So I've got a Magix uh, Evo. I've had really good success with this Magix before uh, and it's uh, been nice and fast and good for the price. So I thought when I saw this new one, I thought I'd try that out. So it's an A1 card. Uh, in fact, these are all three uh, A1 cards. So this Gigastone comes in some quite cheap packaging, but uh, there's a lot of them on Amazon being promoted quite heavily. So I thought I'd give it a try. And then also Integral, I've had uh, SSDs in my old Mac. I've got an Integral SSD and it's been very, very good. Uh, so far, these are the two fastest cards I've had, the Kingston Canvas Go and also the SanDisk Extreme Pro. So let's switch over to screen capture. Okay, so this was the most recent one, six SD cards tested, and I think I put all the results in the description. I'm hoping I did. I did, excellent. So let's copy those over. And create a text document. And pop them in there so we can come back to that later on. So let's save that on my USB stick. And I'm going to write each card with Raspberry Pi Imager. And I'm going to use my backed up operating system, which I think I've got on here. Custom. So this Pi OS 32 dot image is my Raspberry Pi OS 32 bit, but with things like Pi apps and Commander Pi and various things like that in it. So let's hit open on that. Choose my SD card. Well, let's open the Gigastone and pop that one in. Okay, so that shows up straight away, 32 gig. And I'm going to do the same to the other two cards. So I'm going to have three identical copies of Raspberry Pi OS to do the speed test on. Interestingly, the magic shows up as 32.2 gig. I'm not sure if I've seen that before, but let's write it anyway. Okay, so not the best start for the magic's card. So I'm going to erase that because it came up with an error. Uh, just check that it's on the right one. Yeah, and right and yes. Oh, still has a problem uh, formatting it. Okay, let's eject it and pop it back in again. And erase. Still got a problem. I might try it in another device or directly, maybe I'll try it in the Pi 400. I'm gonna do the other disc first. I'm gonna do the integral one. So, erase. 31.3 gig, hit right and yes. So that erased fine. Uh, so I want to put the operating system on now. So custom, Pi OS 32. I don't know why I needed to erase that really, but I did anyway, so it doesn't matter. So this is the integral card. So the integral card wrote fine. Uh, so let's close down Raspberry Pi Imager, uh, eject the integral card. So I've got two of them written so far. So I booted the same OS up on the Raspberry Pi 400. I've got my card that's not working, this Magix card. So let's pop that into the card slot. Uh, and if you're wondering, I had a faulty card slot on my Pi 400 and I fixed it. It's in another video, uh, but it's all been working absolutely fine. So let's launch Imager. I haven't got my ethernet cable in, that's why I've got a short list there. So raise card, choose card, SD card, and write. Has been erased, okay. So let's write that, uh, that's weird, wasn't it? Use custom image, PyOS32, open, choose card, and the Magix card, and write, and yes. 
Okay, so that's actually worked fine in the card read of the Pi 400. I'm going to do the test on my Pi 4 4 gig because that's what I use for most of the other tests. Uh, because my 8 gig has got that SD card extender, so it's not a fair test. Uh, but I don't usually have problems with the SD card extender. I also haven't had any issues with any other SD cards. And also, I've got three other Magix cards which have been great, so uh, maybe just a glitch. Okay, so I've booted up the Integral card. That's inside the Pi 4 at the moment. You can see the other two cards are there. Uh, I did have a shock, and I'll go into screen capture and show you what happened. So I went into Start and System Tools, no Accessories and Diagnostics. And I ran the test. And you see it happens incredibly fast. And I was thinking, wow, that's probably faster than I've ever seen before. But if you go to Show Log, uh, you'll see there's lots of issues. Uh, and it's all right, it's not a problem. It's not anything to do with the card. Uh, I haven't expanded the partition. So you remember I said I was writing my operating system, which was I loaded it with various things that I like to use in my Pi. Uh, it's like a backup operating system. Uh, when you write it back to the card, it doesn't expand the partition. Uh, luckily, I put Gparted on this, and so I can launch Gparted. I can pop in the password, which is Raspberry if you haven't changed it. Uh, and you can see here that it's unallocated. So I've already done the other two cards. Uh, so if I right click and resize and pull that right over to the side and hit resize and tick and apply. So that's now going to use all of the available space on the SD card. And I, as I say, I've done it on all three cards now. So we're ready to go on the speed test. There you go. So all operations successfully completed. So I can close that down. And if I go start, accessories, diagnostics, and hit run tests. Okay, so it's come up with a pass, so let's do show log. And we did get a fail first of all. Now, this is pretty common, and what I usually do is, I can't remember if I do two or three tests, I'm gonna say two tests. Uh, so let's move this over here, and reset, and run test again. Okay, so we've got a pass again, so show log, and it passed straight away that time, uh, and this is more like the speeds it should be. Uh, so it's only just over on all of them. Uh, well, the uh, sequential write speed is much quicker, um, but you can see that the random write and random read is uh, is only just quicker. But that's fine. That's all, that's what we expect from an A1 card, and these are pretty inexpensive cards. So I'm going to keep this one, and I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to paste it on my USB stick so I can move it through each operating system. So this is integral. Let's call it A1. I need to now boot with the next card that I'm going to use. Okay, so now it's the turn of the Magix Evo. Uh, so let's do exactly the same. Run tests. And that's got a pass, so let's do show log. Oh, it passed first time. The sequential write speed is definitely slower, uh, but the random write speed is good, and the random read speed is very good. Uh, so, in fact, both of those are good, the randoms. Uh, and that, I think, for an operating system is more important. For a USB stick, sequential write speed can be quite important. And uh, the Arcanite USB stick, which I use, has got a very fast sequential write speed for a USB stick. Uh, and it is very handy, but running an OS from it, it's disappointing. So, reset and run tests. So say usually faster the second time. And that's passed again, so show log. Passed first time. This is looking better. Yeah, this is good. Very good. Right, okay. So the Magix Evo got off to a shaky start, but uh, it's, uh, it's pulling away now. So let's copy these three lines and put them in that other document with all the others on there. I'll put this in the description um, so you can look it up quickly rather than watch me go through all the process. Uh, SD card speed tests. Magix Evo, again A1. So slower on the sequential write speed, but faster on the random write speed and the random read speed. So I still think 
so far the Magix Evo uh, is my favorite from this test. So let's save that. And let's boot up from the last one, the Gigastone, the one that's heavily uh, sort of promoted on Amazon. Okay, so now the Gigastone. So where do you think this is gonna come? Uh, pop your comment in before you watch the results. Uh, I think it's probably gonna come last, but you never know. Uh, I think it might be like the NetAct, but I haven't tested it, so uh, let's have a look. Run tests. Well, I think that might have happened quite fast. So show log. So it got passed straight away. Ooh, it's not bad. 19.258.602 for the random write speed and 16.76 for the random read speed. So let's reset, well let's move that over there. Reset and run tests. And it's got a pass again, so show log. 21.588.17.45. I think I'm gonna keep, it's tricky, but I think I'm probably gonna keep this one. They're pretty close, aren't they? Uh, it's up and down. So let's copy those three. Gigastone. Close that down, save it. So if I go full screen, can I get them all on? Yes, I can. So the fastest still, have I not got the, oh, I haven't got the Samsung Pro on here. So the Samsung Pro I haven't added on here. So I didn't have it at the time, did I? So uh, I'll add that to this list. Um, but at the moment, so the Magix Evo is slower on random read and random write than the old Magix, which is interesting. Uh, but both passed the test. So Magix, as a brand, I've I've had a really good experience. As I say, I've had three of them, and they have been decent. Yes, I had a bit of a hiccup with this one at the start, uh, and I don't quite know why that was, but it's uh, it's come out pretty fast. Uh, so Integral, uh, the sequential was very good, if that's what you're interested in. Um, but actually, I think it, I think it's beaten by the Gigas. Oh no, it's close. They're all very close, aren't they? Uh, I think out of this test, I'm gonna give it to the Magix. Uh, it's that random write speed and random read speed is very good. Uh, and so I'm saying that one's the one that I would prefer out of this test, but none of them have been bad. Unlike the NetAc, which came up with a really abysmal random write speed. And that, that was after multiple tests on, I think I ordered five cards, they came in a pack and they were just really disappointing. Uh, the Samsung Evo's always been solid, uh, but the Magix had, had outperformed it for me, uh, certainly on random write speed. And I do like the Canvas Go Plus A2. I really do like that as a card. Uh, and I've used that a lot for various different operating systems and it hasn't let me down. But also the Samsung Pro is very nice as well, but it's, it depends how much you wanna spend. And how much did I spend? Well, obviously it's pounds because I'm in the UK. Gigastone was the cheapest at £5.98. The uh, Magix was £6.80, so the most expensive, and the Integral was £6.49. So overall, I'm happy with that. I got three cards for less than £20, and uh, all three of them passed as an A1 card. And the fact that I've got three different cards means that it's easier for me to keep track of which one's which. I don't have to write on them or anything like that. And I meant to mention uh, the backup that I was using. If you want to know a bit more about that, it's this video. And I did a video on how to create a backup, shrink it and restore it. So uh, it's just quite handy. If you get an operating system and you uh, connect it to the Wi-Fi and you install the bits you want, you get it set up, you want to back it up so that every time you do a new, new operating system, you don't have to start from, the, from scratch. Let's have a look at, for that Samsung Pro. So the Samsung Pro was in this video, uh, so I can copy the description from there and pop that in this list. Let's pop it second in the list. There you go, so I'll include all of this in the description. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.